Why, well, hello there, everybody, and welcome back to the Frozen Frontier. So, um, Nick, Kel, William. Yeah, so let's let's pick back up just as um, William's walking back into the keep after dropping off Yaramir after that little adventure. And uh, I head back through the gates and mm -hmm. spot the, the captain of the guard, whose name is... That's a good question. Yep. Should have probably figured this out earlier. Francis. Ty Tyrus Fellows? Tyrus Fellows? No. <laughs> no. But he could be Byrus Tellos. Byrus Tellos, okay. So I spot Byrus Tellos, the captain of the guard, uh, hanging around in the yard. And uh, I, letting out a sigh, like walk up to him. Ah, Byrus, it's, it's good to see you. How's your day? Could be better. The rain could let up. Yeah, it's been raining for two days. That that wizard had me just wandering around down the uh, down the river looking for some cave. Hmm. Some wizard send you off into a cave again? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to recruit my my team for the expedition, and Alatar recommended this uh, this Yaramir fellow. He came from Matava. So, hmm. Strange guy, but uh, yeah, he. I think he's going to come along. I'm, I'm hopeful. Hmm. Hmm. Well, how are things going for the expedition? Well, he's my first recruit. Uh, I'm a little bit worried, though. I, I, the weather in Matava is not exactly cold, and uh, I'm not sure how <laughs> he's going to handle handle it down there on Caldonia. I'm sure it's going to be horrendous. Temperature. Have you spent much time in the Frostlands? I mean, I've I've been down there to kill some monsters every now and again, but I can't say that I'm uh, well experienced enough in in dealing with such an extreme environment. So perhaps it would be useful to have an expert on that. Hmm. There's a hmm. don't know its name, but rumor. Well, I shouldn't say rumor. There's a, a half-elf that lives out in the Frostlands, uh, well away from everyone else. Strange oh. little creature. You think he, well, he lives He lives down there in the, in the ice? He, she... I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, but yes, lives down there in the icy areas. Uh, a bit of a troublemaker of sorts, I guess you could say. Maybe he's crazy enough to come along. It would Perhaps. be useful to have someone who uh, understands the dangers of the cold. Uh, do, mm. do you know any any more about where he lives, or anyone that might know him better? I think it's a girl. I think ah. it's a woman. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's see. There's been... I, I remember a report... Let me see if I can dig it up. C come inside. Get away from the rain for a moment here. He leads you into Thank his little guardhouse. Thank uh, you, Or a, a little shelter. Uh... And starts flipping through some old logs and goes, yeah, yes, here we go. There is a dispute with a half-elf. No, you're right, a man. Uh, some months back, pulled two swords on some of our soldiers that were down there looking into something. Pe peacefully resolved, no problems, but uh, fearsome little beast. Hmm. Sounds like he might be perfect. I suppose. Although, I don't know if you want the sort of person who would draw weapons on... Royal guards, royal soldiers. Well, let's be honest here. The um, the rules of the city and the kingdom might be a benefit to us here, but where we're going, uh, maybe a little bit of wildness mm. could be helpful. Oh. Fair enough. Well, uh, does, it, does it make mention of where he lives? Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the dispute that guards stepped onto his land and. He didn't take uh. too kindly to that. Uh, shows you the entry and gives a description of the area, uh, the nearby village, and then further to the south of the village, further out in the Frostlands, there is this little property with this little... Uh, where, where do you live, Sean? Uh, that's a, so when I was looking at that map, the, the lake itself, I was like, okay, that lake is probably deadly. Uh, yeah, uh, you probably don't live anywhere near Cinder Spring. <laughs> So I'm thinking, like, let me actually pull it up really fast. 
I doubt you would live below the tree line or south of the tree line. It's probably Maybe not much not. south of the tree line to actually. Yeah, live like I'm probably off of. like as far south as I can get while still keeping the wildlife there, because I think my subsistence method is you know hunting whatever lives okay. in that region. There's like a, a cluster of four round trees directly below Solwick, so you're probably somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah I think right that's as far from it. civilization as you can get and still survive. Okay. All right. So I take note of that and uh, plot out a path. To get there, how's it? How long is it going to look like? It'll be like a couple of days, or um, it probably looks like a day. Okay, so um, I will. Um, I I thank Byrus Tellos, <laughs> and I head to. God, the, he's not going to be a reoccurring NPC. <laughs> <laughs> I head to a, a tailor's or something like that. I'm going to try and buy some uh, some furs for the journey. Sure. Yeah, you get set up with the appropriate clothes. You can take it from the money that you've spent on your... That you've been yeah, given so to I, run this expedition. I buy what I buy. So a heavy cloak, a leather jacket, some leather boots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. And I think it you head out expecting it to be a day-long journey. And it probably ends, being, ends up being a day and a half or maybe even two days to get there. The snow proves a lot more cumbersome than you were expecting. But at least the rain has stopped. Um, yeah, I'm, am I on my horse? Yeah, you're on your horse, and there are areas where you have to walk your horse because the snow gets kind of deep, and your horse is missing steps, and uh, that, that's what's slowing you down here, is the, the depth of the snow and your horse's unsuredness about it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm worried about the, the temperature affecting my horse, and I'm conscious of the fact that the horse isn't actually providing me much mobility bonus Yeah. down here, and I, I think that maybe, perhaps, horses won't be of much use when we get to the expedition. I'm trying to get used to the idea of being cold. Uh, I'm, I'm on a lookout for like a cave or somewhere where I can, if I've got to sleep for the night, uh, I don't want the horse to freeze to death. Right. Um, eventually, you make your way to this place. Uh, could you give us a description of it? Is it a log cabin? Is it a little lean-to? Um, Is it a cave? Do elves cut down trees? If you not, probably, probably don't really like a... know. I think, like, okay. as a half elf, well, okay, you're so disconnected from I, elven I was, tradition I, I somewhat. Sent this to... Oh, sorry, I haven't sent this to you yet. But um, <laughs> I, I had my character like raised by his uh, his mom, who was elven. Okay. And I part of the reason, like, he speaks elven and knows all this elven history is that she tried to like impart elven culture and history on him, and then kind of left when he was about like thirteen or fourteen. Okay. So the elves back in the homeland then would mm -hmm. use time technique and magic to shape living things into the shapes that they want. Okay. Um, you don't have that luxury of time. <laughs> or, I, or I probably magic. just cut down some trees you, then. Yeah, you probably just cut down trees. <laughs> I, I was going to say, like, he might just go for uh, he might just go for a cave, but honestly, like, cave isn't really worthwhile to live in for, like, 15 years. Yeah, it's kind of a so shitty I'll place. Just, yeah, I'll just go with the log cabin. Alright, so coming through the Frostlands, you find this log cabin uh, sheltered by a few trees. There's some signs of habitation, maybe a, a fence around the yard. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, and I think maybe you probably don't see anyone outside of it, but you inside probably have a good view of whoever's coming to your land, and you can see this this man. He's what, like 6'4"? 6'1"? 6'4". 6'4". Huge guy, bulging muscles, Chainmail, leading a horse. He's got a big heavy fur cloak. He's got a sigil embroidered on his chest and a shield hanging off of the side of the horse. A uh, sword at his side. And there's nothing around except for your little domicile. And he's headed right for it. Okay, so I probably, like, grab my weapons, like my, my two swords, and have them strapped to my waist pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, I grab my bow, string it, and walk outside with, uh, with an arrow knocked and just say, That's far enough, human! Hail, stranger. I thought I resolved the dispute with the guards. Last time they stepped foot on my lands, we managed to resolve things peacefully. Why do you disturb me so? I am from Solwick indeed, but I am not here to uh, cause dispute with you. I'm, uh, I'm afraid I'm not as accustomed to the cold as yourself. Could we please step inside? I, I, have, a, I have something to ask of you. I'd say this is a reasonable conversation pace as it is. I look, look around, like look at the snow. <laughs> Very well. Um, my name is Cal William Marshall. I am to 
Captain an expedition for the princess to Caldonia. Do you know of it? Caldonia? Yes. The frozen continents of the I, south. I've heard of the continents. I've not heard of your expedition. Very well. Well, uh, I'm charged with recruiting a team of uh, experienced individuals to help me on my expedition. And you come highly recommended by my captain of the guard as someone who lives out here in these unfavorable conditions. Perhaps you have wisdom to share for me. Does your kind know the first thing about Caldonia? I know some. I'd be interested to know what you do. If, uh, if please, we could, we could head inside. Do you have somewhere for me to tie my horse? The fence will do just fine. And he, uh, Ferris kind of like, you know, releases the uh, the arrow that he had, puts it back in its back in its quiver. Very well. Well, uh, I tie the horse up and I go to to shake your hand. I he just kind of looks at it for a second, then turns around and walks inside. I pat. Look to the horse, pat it, and uh, trudge into the shelter of the abode. Okay, you guys find your way inside the house. The horse is tied up outside to the fence. Uh, what, what's the inside of your house look like? Is it well furnished, sparsely furnished? Are there uh, pictures of things? Sparse. Are there like elven writings on the walls, or is it just kind of like you know mountain man cavern? Um, it's probably pretty pretty sparse for the most part. Okay. I think he tries to write, like he wor he works on um, writing himself. It's like one of the things that he does to pass the time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he has like paper or if he like carves it into wood or what. Mm. But he, um, that, that's probably like the most out there decoration. Although that's like a fireplace, a chair, a bed, and then just like personal belongings that he uses as tools. Maybe like thin sheets of bark that have been cut apart and then used to practice on. Yeah, I could work with that. Okay, there's a, a bit of a fire going in the fireplace. I and the hands. two of you are standing in this sparsely sparsely furnished house. It's a nice piece of civilization you have out here. Uh, I didn't catch your name, friend. Ferris. Ferris. It's, it's a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. Would that I could say the same. What do you know of Caldonia? I know it's been cursed by the gods. And it used to be the home of a great kingdom many great kingdoms indeed well my liege princess Sela of Solwick she seeks to claim some of that wealth and ancient knowledge of the kingdom of dragons and I have been charged with leading the expedition there so you intend to go down and freeze to death in the cold on the off chance that you'll bring back some manner of wealth for your kingdom well, I don't intend to freeze, and perhaps that's why I'm here speaking with you. You quite clearly are adept at living in such uh, difficult conditions. Is there any recommendations you can have, perhaps, uh, besides wearing warm clothes, making large Stay fires? Home. You'd be much, much less likely to die. I don't survive in the cold by staying out for days at a time. I come back to my cabin. There's a nice fire here. As much as I would like to stay at home in my own warm house, uh, I am bound by duty to travel to this place. I don't have the luxury of making my own decisions. So I'll ask again, can you provide me any assistance? That depends. Can you provide me with some? I can try. Well, what is it you are looking for? Do you wish to extend your, extend your the borders of your fence to claim more land here? I can certainly speak to the to to the captain of the guard if you were willing to provide consultation on the expedition. Uh, provide me with knowledge on how best to survive the cold. Neil. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you give an official name for the breaking of the world really fast? No, nope. because <laughs> I'm calling it the breaking, but that's like that's a wheel of time thing. You don't. I think it has a whole bunch of different names based okay. on. It's kind of depends on the region, localized yeah. things. Call it what you will. <laughs> so based on the fantasy series that the player reads. Yeah, <laughs> whatever Perfect. you want to call it. Okay. Back before the breaking of the world, yes. there was an elven kingdom far to the south, gray elves. Mm. 
considered by themselves to be the most noble of all elves, but that's neither here nor there. One thing they did do right was chronicle history. Yes. The Grey Elves went extinct when your kind caused the breaking of the world. Let's not point fingers of blame here. Uh, the gods work in mysterious ways, my friend. Sometimes by burning the world that humans have corrupted. The point being that the history those elves have been collecting has been long lost, well over a thousand years. Hmm. Yes, I see. So, yeah, I, are you a, a student of history? Not myself, but the history of elves is important to all of us. So here is my proposal. I can do you better than information. I can go to Caldonia with you and save you lot from freezing to death in the cold. On, in return, all elven relics that are found down there, most especially the Book of Elven Creation, go to me. Hmm. Well, I could use someone with your, uh, your skill set, but I'm afraid it's not really my place to give away the princess's hard-earned treasure. Um, Would you rather... Dwarves collecting gold, humans collecting all kinds of metals, elves mostly collecting wood. I don't think you'd be giving away much that your kind would want. Some books, some natural grown objects that have been fossilized over time. Hmm. Well, uh... I don't think your queen would mind losing a bit of, a bit of treasure, considering she won't be getting any if you die down there. Princess, but I, I, I see your point. Faris, uh, don't get me wrong here, I, I don't mean any offense by this, but um, I'm not certain how much I can trust you, uh, given you do like seem to want to hide yourself away here. Uh, if we were to leave and you were to come, it would be in a few days' time. I don't quite fancy trekking out here again. Uh, perhaps you would accompany me back to Solwick. I'll provide some uh, adequate accommodation for you and Maybe we can speak on this more, and I will speak to the princess as to your proposal. There's a small village just south of Solwick. Uh, I'll just name it for you, Neil. Crestwick. Oh, wait, no. Wick is actually important, isn't it? Kind of, yeah. Okay, Crestwood. Perfect. Crestwood. I go there to sell furs sometimes. Mm. I don't... I don't really get along with much of anyone. You might you might have been able to deduce that much, but I get along with them well enough. I'll wait for you there. It's only a few hours out of town. Very well. I could uh I could use the the company back on the road anyway. I get quite quite lonely out here. You can barely see five feet in front of your face when the snow blows right. Not with your eyes. Very well, then. Uh, do you have any business that you must uh, attend to before we leave, or can we uh, make haste? Uh, I go around. I think I collect my, my writings. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really have that much in terms of personal belongings. Yeah, I think it's I, I, I think I, mostly what I'm wearing is what I, what I own. Like, I kept my swords on me, mm -hmm. got my bow kind of slung across my shoulder. Yeah, I guess I grab my writings. Kind of stuff them into a backpack. Probably grabs like some food that I've got stocked up, and I'd say, "I'm ready to go." So, are you going to just leave this house to sit for a couple of years in the tundra? Are you going to give uh, it so away like, to I someone? Are you going to destroy like, board it? Things up, right? You could board it up. Yeah. Like my plan was to board up the windows, lock the door, make sure nobody goes in, and then like you know that way, like if I come back and you know the board's been pried off and it looks like people have gone through. You know, I, I know that I have to go, like, massacre the closest to the village. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, but you're leaving it intact. You're not gonna, like, burn the house so no one can use it in your absence. No, there's, like, there's not that much important. Like, I collected the writings, which is probably the most personal okay. thing that he has. And I, I probably threw those in my backpack. Um, and aside from that, like, I think I just... Yeah, I think I think I board it up to make sure that nobody goes in so that I can, like, rehab it. You know, like, mm -hmm. go back into it whenever I get back. Okay. Uh, you so. board up the house with probably William's help a little bit, mm -hmm. if you guys are leaving together. Yeah. So I, I want to ask you on the, on the as we're walking back. So Faris, what kind of uh, monsters do you get this far out here? 
That's a good question. Uh, is there anything fancy, Neil? No, there's not much in the way of monsters in this part of the world down here. Okay. Uh, occasionally there are some wolves that come through, but that's about it. No ice mm. trolls. No ice trolls. Uh, the area near Cinder Springs has some activity, but they stay confined to that hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've probably gone like exploring down south a little bit. Mm -hmm. I say where I, where I live is probably the safest in all the Frostlands. Don't go further south if you know what's good for you. There's very little in the way of game down there, but there's plenty in the way of monsters. Hmm. I'm interested because I'm sure the kind of things that live down here might be the kind of things that we'll run into in the expedition. But, uh... Perhaps. perhaps we'll have to wait and see on that one. It's an entirely different continent. Plenty of time for different species to have to habitate each one. Hmm. It's an interesting way of looking at it. Do you think the gods would inhabit different species down there than here? I don't see why they wouldn't. To be honest, I'd be surprised if anything's living down there. When your kind broke the world, the gods did their best to exterminate all life down there. Hmm. I've, I've got a feeling that it's not going to be as simple as just snow and ice. Maybe you're right. Um, this village that you stay at, are you sure I can't tempt you to come to Solwick? It can provide you uh, comfortable accommodation. A warm bed, uh, feathers, a feather feather blanket. The village will be plenty. A village alone is already more humans than I typically prefer to deal with. Very well. Uh, do you need me to, to pay for lodgings for you, or can you... Uh... That would be helpful. I don't have any furs to sell this time. Very well. Uh, so as we as we get to the village, then I'm going to carry on to Solwick. I, I hand you a bag of, of coppers, maybe a couple of silver in there. And I say, um, I'll send a messenger when it's time to leave. Uh, he'll, bear, he'll bear my seal. You'll know it's from me. Your seal? Yes, and I, I show my shield. And say, uh, I, it's likely to be a few days. Um, but uh, thank you for your your offer, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak to the princess as to, as to your uh, conditions. That condition is dependent on my coming, so I'd hope that you bring back word on that front. Very well, yes, I'll, I'll mention it in the letter. <laughs> I think Ferris kind of like looks at the emblem on your shield and says, <clears throat> A high mind for vanity you lot have. It's important to uh, recognize one's position and keeping track of your family and uh, the accomplishments of your elders, it's important. Do you not think? Perhaps it is. Yeah, you know, we can't all live out in the middle of nowhere on our own. Perhaps not. I didn't come here to talk until the ground opens up and swallow us. On with you, human. Hmm. This is probably more conversation than you've had in the last year. Very well. I'll leave. Uh, it's, it's nice to meet you, Faris. I'll hut. Hesitantly hold out another hand to shake. <laughs> it's just kind of like... It says, Just send the messenger whenever you're ready. Right. And it heads into the end. So I'd like turn around and roll my eyes a little bit. And feel bad for judging him. And uh, get back on my horse and make way to Solwick. Alright. You make your way back to Solwick where you discuss with the princess the events. She agrees that the elven relics can go to this other person, mm -hmm. uh, mostly because she doesn't believe the stories of the Grey Elves. There, It is known that there was a collection of elves that lived down there, but it was a predominantly human kingdom, and she's fairly cons convinced that there's not going to be anything in the way of elven treasures, and if they are, they're going to be such a minority that it's not even worth looking into. Um, sure. So she willingly, you know, fuck it, who gives a shit? Whatever you need to get the mission done. Fantastic, Princess Sella. Uh, I have now acquired two members for my expedition. I have a wizard recommended by Alatar, and this half-elf who seems to be an expert in surviving in the cold. But I'm afraid I'm one man down. Uh, is there anyone, any expertise you think I'm missing? Uh, is there anyone you could recommend? Hmm. Caledonia is a mountainous continent. 
formed by a volcanic chain. Yes. She looks at you. Not that you're too old to climb anything, but hm. uh, uh, perhaps you should find a, a skilled mountaineer. That seems to be uh, sage advice, princess. Well, we can't. I'm not as youthful as yourself, but uh, my old bones haven't given up on me yet. But perhaps uh, an expert climber could be of use. Someone to lead the way. Mm. I think I know just the man, in fact. Uh, and I think, why don't we close off this section here with Sean. And we're going to take a break. And when we come back from a break, we'll be introducing our fourth PC. And then we'll do a short section of the whole party gathering together down at the docks for the very first time. So we'll see you guys on the other side of our break. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.